We're here at GP St. Pete and we have some interviews lined up for you guys and it feels so great to be back inside the truck. I love it here. And I will see you guys later while we get on with this. Woohoo! Jimmy Johnson and Scott McLaughlin wanting to race full to part-time schedules. Will there be enough cars and teams to go around for them and road to Indy drivers in the future? In your opinion, how does a series grow and accommodate a larger grid? Oh yeah, there's definitely room. I mean, uh, you know, they're going to be coming in the series and uh, there's still going to be, there's always rotation. There's always, you know, you're going to have the Scott Dixons and the, and those guys started retiring and you're going to need, you know, the good the good young kids coming up like Colton and and BK and those type guys. So there's always going to be that turnaround. There's always going to be room for them, you know. It's uh you know, we're always we're always looking for good talent uh, and you know, we'll always make room for good talent. How do you feel about the idea of Ferrari and IndyCar, does this add to the excitement of what's to come in the future for the series? Or as someone who operates a team, do you just see the cost of uh, competition going up? Uh, no, I believe that in some ways it'll go down um, if, if they come in because, you know, for uh, companies like Honda and Chevrolet, they would love to not have to, to supply as many cars as they do. And if they did that, I think it would open up more funding for the teams because they wouldn't have to, you know, ex extend themselves to having a, to uh, supply half the field. They'd only have to supply a third of the field. So I, I think it would be a very big positive if somebody like Ferrari came into the series. Do you think Ferrari and IndyCar signals a sort of pushback to teams possibly building their own cars again one day to compete, or do you think IndyCar is going to be as is for the foreseeable future? Yeah, Ferrari won't be able to build their own cars if they come in. They're just going to be an engine manufacturer. Um, they're they're going to stick with the the spec spec car that we have. We know the car is going to probably be here probably through two, at least 2027. We believe so. You know, I, we got to stay with the spec program because that's when the expense gets out of hand. You know, we have to keep the rules the way they are. In fact, we need to even probably tighten them up even a little more to save more money on the budget. Do you miss, like, having different types of Well, obviously, as that? a competitor, yeah. I mean, it was always fun having something new and different, but uh, times have changed. You know, the, the, it, you just uh, it, you can't sustain that anymore. You know, there's... The, the, the series doesn't give you the ROI to be able to go out and buy new cars every year and things like that. So, uh, you know, I don't see that changing. You've done an amazing job of helping careers on the road to Indy. What are your thoughts on how you can expand the grid in Indy Lights? Yeah, well, we're, we'll be running four cars again next year. Um, I firmly believe in the series. I think it's very important. I think if you see, if you look at the, the field, 90% of the guys came out of Indy Lights, and uh, yeah, I think it's very important for the future of our sport. So I really uh, uh, am 100% behind it. I'm hoping that you know it'll draw some of the other big teams to get more involved. I think that's what it needs, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, Roger will come up with incentive for you know other teams that want to get involved with the series. You were actually became the first ever IndyCar Funko Pop yesterday. You are in a business. How do we get more products licensed into pop culture for the series? How do we get more IndyCar merch into the mainstream and back in retail stores again? That's that's a that's a tough one. You know, I mean, I think that's what we all strive for. You know, there was a point where. You know, you saw a lot of our, our stand-ups in, in all different types of stores, and I think, you know, uh, that's part of rebuilding the series and getting the ratings back up to where we need to be. I think once you get, you know, if you can start pulling, you know, ones and twos regularly uh, on the ratings, at that point, I think you're going to have uh, companies investing more, and when they start investing more, then they'll start getting behind it, you know, for their store promotions and things like that, or product promotions. So, yeah, I think that's something that I think we need to still, you know, strive to get back there. You know, we did have it at one point, and uh, we shot ourselves in the foot by having a split, and we're still paying that price. But, 
Having said that, I think we're going in the right direction. I think things are going up, especially at a time when a lot of things are going down in other sports. So I think that's a, that's a positive. Well, that says it all starts here, but actually all ends here, and so does my video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I had tons of fun. I mean, the interviews, everybody here, the energy, it was amazing. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. So I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, like, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one later. Bye!